All right, everybody, welcome. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing... What is it? Hammer of God by Arthur C. Clarke. Man, I keep referring to it as the Hammer of the Gods. No, it's Hammer of God. Hammer of the Gods is like a Led Zeppelin album or song or something like that. Hammer of God is... The 1993 science fiction novel by Arthur C. Clarke. Only the second Arthur C. Clarke book I've ever read. If you saw my re- previous review of Rendezvous with Rama, that was the only Arthur C. Clarke. This is the only Arthur C. Clarke book I've read for 20, 30 years. I've had this in my collection forever. I just reread it and I thought, well, maybe I should go ahead and buy the rest of the Arthur C. Clarke books, which I did. And you will see those on my March book haul because I got like 10 Arthur C. Clarke books and I thought I would start reading them. And I started with Hammer of God. The cover. Who who did the cover? It's a decent cover. I like it. That was done by one Stephen Ewell. Him and Stephen Ewell and his brother Paul Ewell did a lot of illustrations back in the 90s for Bantam Books. There's a Bantam Book little logo there. Bantam Spectra. They did a lot. Uh, Stephen Paul Ewell did a ton of illustrations. They always did a good job. Now, another thing I wanted you to point out about these covers was it's almost similar to this one. This one's almost, we've got this big meteor right here. Sailing through the space, aimed for Earth. Well, in this cover over here, we've got this big, what they thought was a meteor, sailing through space, headed for Earth. That's the setup of both novels. Both novels have the same exact setup. It's a story about, Rendezvous with Rama is a story, but hey, there's a meteor headed for Earth. Hammer of God, hey, there's a meteor headed for Earth. In Rendezvous with Rama, they go out and they find out it's actually not a meteor, but it's a spaceship. In uh, Hammer of God, they go out and find out that it's actually a meteor. And it's headed for Earth, and it's going to destroy Earth. It's big enough that it's going to just pulverize this place to mashed potatoes. They name it the meteor Cali, and they give the history. So one of the things that's good about this book, I'm going to be straightforward, folks. This is the same story told twice. This one's the better of the two. We're going to talk about the little, the, some of the distinctions that I found. Some of the similarities, some of the differences, and why I liked that one way better than I like this one. This one gives us history of meteorites crashing into Earth. They call the meteorite here Cali. There's a spaceship out there, just like in Rendezvous with Rama. There's a spaceship already out there nearby, because this takes place in the future. There's a spaceship out there called the Goliath. It's already it's headed by this guy named Captain Singh. It's already out there, so they say, hey, man, it's a nuclear-powered spaceship. You guys got to go over to this meteor and blow it up with your spaceship. So it's a death mission, like the movie Armageddon, just like Armageddon. It's a death mission. The, these, this Captain Singh and his crew, they're on the spaceship Goliath, a nuclear-powered spaceship, and they've been just told now that, hey, you're on a suicide mission. You've got to smash that meteor to bits and um, die in the process. Sounds like a fantastic setup for a great novel. It was a fantastic setup for the movie Armageddon. The problem I have between the two books is in this book, we go, I mean, they think it's a meteor, they, they find out it's a spaceship, and within the first 20 pages, they're already on that spaceship exploring it. This book takes forever, because this book flashes back in history to every single character that's in it has a backstory, and we get the backstory for the first couple hundred pages, and it's only a 250 page, 240 page book. So we get a ton of backstories of where Dr. Singh came from, who everybody else is. Um, we get to learn so much about the politics of the Earth a couple hundred years from now. Yeah, everything. The, you know, clearly the author has an agenda. He does not like capitalism. He's a socialist. 
So in his future Earth capitalism, the end of evil capitalism, right? Yeah, yeah, spare me, you know, make me vomit right now. And then, you know, globalist socialists own the the entire world economy and everybody lives in, uh, you know, a socialist utopia, you know. Hey, <laughs> kill me now. Please just kill me now, people. Kill me now. And so he, a lot of the author's politics kind of come through in this because clearly he's a he's a he's a 100% socialist. Hey, I don't have problems with some socialist ideals. I just don't want to be 100% socialist. I don't mind I don't mind some of it, but I am a capitalist heart at heart. So we get a lot of that, we get a lot of the politics, and then we get um the prelude to everybody's life. And then at the end, it kind of, kind of, the, we, the, Armageddon, the, the Armageddon movie type stuff happens. Everybody knows they will die. One of the things that's cool about this is all the space people are bald. I'm bald. Why are they bald? Why are all the space people, why are the people on uh, the spaceship Goliath bald? Well, because turns out, in a non-gravity environment, having hair didn't make no sense. Because you can't keep it, you can't have a hairdo. You cannot have, you can, you can comb it all you want. You can comb it, comb, 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 style, 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 step into non-gravity and you're fucked. So then you shave it off. I thought that was cool. I thought that was cool. You know, this book does send, it gives you the same sense of wonder as a rendezvous with Rama in, in the fact that it's like trying to tell you, hey, what's out there in space? What's out there that can kill us? Is it alien or is it just a meteor? And so to the at the beginning you're like yeah I have the I had the same sense of wonder but then it just sort of like where rendezvous with Rama sort of went right to the spaceship and started exploring at first and it kept the sense of wonder alive in us the uh hammer of god more or less does the same setup but then it kind of spins backwards and gives us the the life story of all of our characters that you know, we're gonna, that are on the Goliath and that are on Earth, and, and you know, you know, it's just, and you know, uh, you know, they're gonna die, however, there's a twist at the end, that, that, but I won't give the twist at the end. Do they die? Do they not die? Do they, do they destroy the meteor? Do they not? Or is it really the hammer of God? There's a twist! I will not give you the twist. I thought the twist was kind of semi-unique. I didn't see it coming. Uh, so, I gave this 10 out of 10. I'm giving this one, you know, maybe about a 6.5 out of 10. It was better than average. It was a better than average science fiction novel. Very well written. Arthur C. Clarke is a very good writer. Got to give him props for that. And the story did keep me engaged to the end. So 6.5 out of 10. I think, uh, you know, add all the Arthur. I can't wait to get to the other Arthur C. Clarks that I bought. So anyway, there we go.